Sublime Text 4 is almost upon us, and there is an absolute avalanche of exciting new features and enhancements to existing functionalities for us to take a look at. So if you're not already using Sublime Text 4, chances are you're going to be using it pretty soon. Now, I've seen people ask a lot of questions about their initial migration from Sublime Text 3 to Sublime Text 4, and I've gathered together some of the most common ones. We're going to cover them all here right now. <music> Hey, hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odan Nerd here. Welcome to this week's video where we're talking about migrating yourself from Sublime Text 3 to Sublime Text 4. And there's a lot of questions people have about this. Can I share configurations? Is it going to cause a problem to run the two of them? How do I get things all set up? We're going to cover all of that juicy information in just a few minutes, so stay tuned. If you're not already a Sublime Text user, then you may see uh, some exciting things here that'll make you want to switch. And whether you're using Sublime or not, you're going to want to use the buttons down below my head to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon because the channel is absolutely full of Sublime Text videos. We've got a ton of exciting new content covering Sublime Text 4 on the way and of course the plugin 101 video series and you're going to want to hang around for that before we get to the juicy content of today's video though question of the day are you already using sublime text 4 if you're not using it are you planning on using it and if you are using it what's your favorite feature let me know down in the comment section below now, if you've never seen Sublime Text 4 before, it looks a little bit something like this. There's a lot of visual changes to take in here. I'm using the adaptive theme currently, which I was using previously, and I'm now using the Mariana color scheme, where previously I used Monokai, uh, both of those being the respective uh, default color schemes in each version of Sublime Text. Mariana is now the new default. There's a lot of other visual changes here as well. Starting from the top of the window, you might notice up above my head that the caption of all of these windows looks a little bit different now because we can now customize that via themes. This is something that used to be available only to macOS versions of Sublime Text. It now works on Windows as well. With that, we have the ability, if we so choose, to have the menu appear not as a normal menu bar underneath the caption, but as a hamburger icon, as we call it, which we can see right here, which still leaves the menu available to us. We can still call it up via the standard alt key, but it doesn't take up as much space in the window. And you might notice as you go through this menu that all of the items that you expect to see are still in there. They're just arranged in a slightly different fashion. And also they display a little bit differently because Sublime Text 4 now has the ability to alter its color scheme and theme based on the operating system setting. So if your operating system is light, the menus and the color scheme and the theme can be light and it'll automatically switch to an appropriate dark color scheme and theme and menu when the system switches into dark mode so that Sublime follows the system in that regard. You might also notice that the tabs have changed as well. I currently have those set to curved corner tabs, but we also have the ability to get square corner tabs and the old style angle tabs as well. And of course, themes can change tabs to look like whatever they might like. Now, there's a ton of features in Sublime Text, not just related to the visual look of it. And if we were to look inside of the change log, well, there is a lot of stuff in here. I mean, a lot of stuff because the developers have really been accumulating a lot of new changes into this build, in part because, as we stated in a previous video, which I will link down below, the next version of Sublime Text isn't going to be Sublime Text 4, it's just going to be Sublime Text. And the licensing scheme is changing therein. Instead of being licensed to a major version, we're just purchasing the ability to have updates for a set period of time. That makes sure that the developers don't have to do what we can see in this change log right here, which is have an absolute mountain of changes in order to justify an upgrade cost because upgrades are going to happen on an ongoing basis. Changes uh, and new features can just be rolled out as soon as they are available and done testing, which is going to make our lives a lot, lot better. But we're not here to bask in the visual glory that is Sublime Text 4. We're here to ask your answer your questions rather about how to migrate to it. How do I get myself a copy of Sublime Text 4? Nominally, you get copies of Sublime Text by going to sublimetext.com, going to the download page, and there will be links there for you to download either the stable version, which is the one you can use for evaluation testing if you're not already a licensed user, or the one that is the stable build that's not under active development, if that's the sort of build you like. Or there's a link to development builds, which instead are more bleeding edge builds of Sublime Text and require you to have a currently valid license. However, at the time that I'm recording this video, Sublime Text 4 hasn't been publicly announced on the web page yet. So you can still use it if you want to, as I am doing right here. But to do that, you're going to need to go to the Sublime Text Discord. And all you have to do there is go down into the description 
description of the video, there's a link to the Discord server. Click that, join the Discord in the announcements channel. There is all the downloads that you might want. Now remember, stable builds are for evaluation. Development builds are more bleeding edge and require a license. And as of right now, the builds that are available inside of the Sublime Text Discord, inside of this discrete beta period that we're currently in, are development builds only, which means you need to be a licensed user of Sublime Text in order to use them. But you don't need to purchase a license. If you have an existing Sublime Text 3 license, you will be able to test that out. How compatible is Sublime Text 4 with Sublime Text 3? The developers have put a lot of work into Sublime Text 4 to make sure that it is compatible as possible with Sublime Text 3. For example, one of the features of Sublime Text 4 is a brand new plugin host with a new version of Python for packages to take advantage of, which gives them a little bit more power. However, packages need to opt themselves into that plugin host, and any package that doesn't, which is every package that was originally made for Sublime Text 3, will be run in a compatibility plugin host running the same version of Python that has always been available to Sublime Text 3 to keep things running as smoothly as possible. Now, that said, there are some potential statistical outliers in the attempt to keep things as compatible as possible because there have been a lot of feature changes in Sublime Text and enhancements and nuances. So it's possible for a package or plugin that you use that it, that it might have taken advantage of a particular quirk of Sublime, which is now fixed, in which case that package may no longer work quite the same. But by the same token, you may no longer need said package. There could potentially also be some visual changes as well. One of the things that's changed, as we can see, is the theming support in Sublime. Now, the authors, of course, have gone to as much trouble as possible to make sure that existing themes will still continue to work. But if there's an older theme that doesn't have some newer theme elements in it, it's entirely possible that the fill-ins that Sublime uses just to make sure that things will display may not use, for example, a color that you might like. And something like that, we would, you can test that by switching to, say, for example, the adaptive theme, which is the one that I'm using here, or default. Uh, but there are, there are some things that don't quite work. But by and large, everything should be 100% of the same. And if anything doesn't work, then what you can do is jump into the Discord at the link down in the description, ask to see if other people have uh, noticed a similar problem. There's also a link to the issue tracker down below because anything that used to work in Sublime and doesn't anymore in Sublime Text 4 is potential cause for something to report. And you can do that in the issue tracker, but always make sure that you search the existing issues to make sure that someone hasn't reported the same issue that you're about to report because filling up the issue tracker with a lot of duplicate reports doesn't help the problem get fixed any faster. If I switch to Sublime Text 4, am I going to have to spend a bunch of time reconfiguring everything? No, absolutely not. But also, kind of, yes. See, if you run Sublime Text 4 on a system that previously had Sublime Text 3 on it, it will find your Sublime Text 3 configuration area and just use that. It will use the exact same configuration you had previously. So all you have to do is start it and you are good to go. Though, of course, it may uh, find some packages that need to be upgraded to Sublime Text 4 specific version, say, for example, the package dev package, which is a mainstay here on the channel and something that you should be using yourself as well. But apart from that, nothing needs to be configured. And I did say kind of yes, and that's because there are a ton of new features in this copy of Sublime Text. And of course, we're going to be covering them in upcoming videos on the channel. So buttons down below, thumb, subscribe, share, bell notification icon, etc. Uh, and in that regard, you may want to go into the default preferences and look around to see uh, what new settings are in there that might tweak some feature to your liking. For example, tab shape, as we can see here, I have it set to rounded tabs. Now, what I just said applies to people that have a normally installed copy of Sublime Text. If you're a person that uses a portable install of Sublime Text, then there is a little bit more work that you need to do. So keep watching. Can I have Sublime Text 3 and Sublime Text 4 installed and running in parallel? Yes, you can in fact do this, although you may want to be careful with actually doing so. As we just stated, if you run Sublime Text 4 and it sees Sublime Text 3 configuration information, then it will use that configuration area so that it runs exactly the same as Sublime Text 3, which is normally what you would want for an upgrade path. However, the information on the session, that is the 
contents of Windows that you had open is stored inside of that configuration area, which means that gets stored between Sublime Text 3 and 4 as well, which means if you ran them both literally at the same time with one copy of each running, then they would be competing with each other. So that may not be the best idea. Also, one of the exciting new features in Sublime Text 4 is the ability to select multiple tabs and have temporary splits to be able to see them side by side without having to change the window layout. That slightly changes that session information. So if you use Sublime Text 4 and then go back to Sublime Text 3, you may find that you need to manually focus one file in every view group in the window in order to get things to display properly, which isn't harmful, it's just kind of an annoying glitch. The bigger problem, however, is that some packages now, say for example, the package dev package, as I previously mentioned, have versions that are specific to Sublime Text 4. And what that means is if you're not careful, you start Sublime Text 4, your package gets upgraded to the Sublime Text 4 version, and then you switch back to Sublime Text 3, package control decides that your package isn't compatible and removes it and then reinstalls the older version, and then you go back to Sublime Text 4 and it upgrades, and it's an endless cycle. There are, of course, ways around that, but that's just something to keep in mind. What if I want my configuration for Sublime Text 3 and 4 to be distinct from each other? This is in fact entirely possible and there's a few reasons why you might want to do it. One would be to make sure that you don't run into that problem that we just covered in the previous question, which is that if you have Sublime Text 3 and 4 sharing the same configuration area, they could potentially get in little digital fist fights about what versions of packages are installed, amongst other things. You may want to have your copy of Sublime Text 4 be completely distinct so that you can feel free to play with it with impunity and know that your Sublime Text 3 production environment is still existing. Exactly the same. You may want to start your journey in Sublime Text 4 with a completely empty config and build something up from there instead of using your existing config. Or maybe you just want to have the two of them completely distinct and start them off from the same configuration base and go from there. All of these are very easy to pull off and they all start with the same set of steps, which is to start up your copy of Sublime Text 3 and use Preferences Browse Packages from the menu or from the command palette to open up the Packages folder. And as we've stated in other videos, this is going to use your system-specific file browser to open this particular folder, no matter where you've installed Sublime Text or on what operating system, this will always work. Now, if you go up to directory levels, you will see a folder here named Sublime Text 3. This is what we refer to in Sublime Text as the data directory. For reasons we're going to talk about in just a moment, we've also covered this previously in another video, which I've linked down in the description as well, if you'd like some more information on this. But this is the place where Sublime Text 3 stores all of its configuration information. And if this directory exists and the directory we're about to talk about in a second doesn't exist, Sublime Text 4 will use this one for compatibility reasons to make sure that you can upgrade to the new build and still have things working. So. Here's what you can do. If you would like to start your copy of Sublime Text 4 completely with a brand new configuration straight out of the box as if it was brand spanking new, all you have to do is create a folder here named Sublime Text. Basically the exact same folder name as you see here but without the 3 on the end because of course Sublime Text 4 isn't Sublime Text 4, it's just Sublime Text as we've covered recently on the channel. And that's all you have to do. Once that directory is there, start up your copy of Sublime Text 4 and it will see that that folder exists and prefer it over the Sublime Text 3 version. Now here it's completely empty, so if you're using one of the beta builds, the first thing you're gonna have to do is enter your license key in there because this is a development build. Uh, and other than that, you are completely good to go. Configure this up to your heart's content exactly the way as you would have previously. On the other hand, you may want to start your configuration for Sublime Text 4 the same as Sublime Text 3, and that's easy as well. All you have to do is take the existing folder and copy it to get a duplicate and then rename it to Sublime Text, the exact same folder name. And then you can start up your copy of Sublime Text 4 and it'll be configured exactly the same way. It'll even have the exact same session information that it had the last time that you started it. Now remember, there's a lot of things that are different uh, defaults in Sublime Text 4, so you may need to do some configurations here. For example, Mariana is the new default color scheme. The default cursor attribute is solid instead of blinking, to name just but two that catch people 
people off guard. So you may want to jump into that preferences menu. And of course, you may also want to use the buttons down below to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon because these sorts of things are things we're definitely going to be covering in upcoming videos on the channel. And you're not going to want to miss them to make sure that you're getting the most out of your copy of Sublime Text 4. What if I'm using a portable version of Sublime Text? Which is a nicer alternate way of the question, hey, old ant nerd, you lying liar pants, are your pants actually on fire hanging from a telephone wire? I started my copy of Sublime Text 4 and it didn't see my copy of Sublime Text 3's configuration at all. If you had this question, hopefully you asked it the nicer way. The thing that we're covering here is the notion that normally, as we just saw, there's a location inside of your home directory somewhere that is the place where Sublime will store its configuration information. The location varies depending on the operating system that you're on, but Windows, Mac OS, and Linux all have dedicated areas to store this particular information. And Sublime Text 3 would store its configuration there normally, and Sublime Text 4 would look in the exact same location, see the configuration for Sublime Text 3, and continue working. Now, if that doesn't work for you, then it's probably because one or both of the copies of Sublime Text that you're using are portable versions, which, as their name suggests, keeps their configuration inside of the same location as the application itself, which is what makes them portable. You can put it on a USB stick and carry it around with you and have your configuration ready to go. Now, if you're using a copy of Sublime Text that's a portable build, then these steps here are a little bit different. And if you're not sure if you're using a portable build, there's an easy way to check. You would start by taking your copy of Sublime Text and using Preferences, Browse Packages, from the menu or the command palette to open the packages folder, just as we saw previously, which again will always show you the location where your packages files are being stored, the place where Sublime thinks your configuration is. Now go up two directory levels from there. If you find yourself looking at a folder named Sublime Text 3, then you are not using a portable build of Sublime. However, if you see a directory named data and what looks suspiciously like executables and other installation paraphernalia for a copy of Sublime Text, then you, my friend, are running a portable version. The contents, the, the stuff inside of that directory named data is the same as the information that would be in the Sublime Text 3 folder if you weren't using a portable version or just the Sublime Text folder if you were using Sublime Text 4. This is why this is actually referred to as the data directory when most of the time it doesn't have that name at all, which has been a source of much confusion. And there's also a video on the channel that goes into that in more detail, which I've linked down in the description if you'd like to get more of the nitty gritty on this operation. So... If you are using a portable build, then there's a few different options available to you. If your copy of Sublime Text 3 and 4 are both portable, then just take the data directory from your Sublime Text 3 and copy it over top of the data directory in your copy of Sublime Text 4 and start your Sublime Text 4 and you'll be good to go. Be careful that this is going to clobber over anything that actually existed in that directory, so make sure that you know that that's what you're doing. You can always move the existing one away if you don't want to clobber anything. If one of them is a, a portable copy and one isn't, then you need to go to I, both of the two locations and copy the interior. For example, if your copy of Sublime Text 3 was portable, but your copy of Sublime Text 4 was not, then in Sublime Text 3, you would find the Sublime Text 3 directory and then copy it to the place where the Sublime Text 4 installation is and then rename the directory Sublime Text 3 to data. And then you'll be good to go. And of course, the same thing would also work in reverse as well. And that is the most common questions that people have about getting started with their copy of Sublime Text 4 for the very first time. Hopefully this will set you up. If you have any further questions about this, let me know down in the comments section below. And of course, you can also use those buttons down there while you're down there asking your question. If you thumbs subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon because we've got a lot more juicy Sublime Text 4 coverage coming your way. Until then, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.